Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night. It is the Earthmaster out here, about 11, 10 p.m. here, California time, April 17th, 2024. Latest activity here shows a, uh, looks like a 2.5 earthquake here somewhere in the mix, right around the um, Turkey area, it looks like. There's some decent earthquake activity ramping up there, including a 2.8 a little bit further west. So this activity stirring up, it looks like across this region here of the plate boundary now usgs only showing a handful of these earthquakes here which uh they're showing a 4.6 and a 4.1 does look like there's some smaller quake activity just south here along the along this uh, plate boundary as well 2.8 coming in now to the mediterranean region i uh, did see a little bit of activity north of iceland here along the uh, northern edge of this plate boundary a little 3.3 the rest of the atlantic looks pretty quiet for now still waiting on some movement out here in california we've seen a handful of smaller quakes in between this activity that's going on we've got a pretty decent cluster of earthquake activity into the gulf of california let me go back here and show you guys uh, it's been an ongoing deal out here throughout the last 24 hours usgs as you can see reporting about three of them but uh, being listed as quite a bit more here on the earthquake 3d globe and this has been kind of an enhanced area of earthquake activity here in the last couple days along the middle america trench up into the gulf of california uh, it seems to have skipped california for now and hit a 4.9 way up here into the northern edge just shy of the northern edge of the cascadia subduction zone this is along the uh, explorer plate a 4.9 earthquake coming in earlier this afternoon so we'll keep an eye here on the west coast normally we'll get uh, a lot of plate boundary movement here north and south uh, things tend to uh, pick up here across california so what do we have here i uh, got it mostly microquake activity out here today in the state of california and southern california specifically off the brawley seismic zone and the san jacinto fault zone showing quite a bit of activity uh, if we pull up the 2.5 map and above well, that leaves uh, a handful of quakes here off the coast of Los Angeles. A couple twos coming in this morning. One minute after one another here uh, for, for some of this earthquake activity. Nothing big, but uh, a little bit of increasing movement out here across the state for now. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, up into Northern California here, got one interesting earthquake here about 19 kilometers deep into the uh, cascadia subduction zone now this looks like a surface quake because it's on the map like this but this is actually fairly deep here uh, into this region of the cascadia let's check trimmer here tonight and see what's going on uh, nada zip zero so doesn't look like a whole lot going on here for trimmer activity right now up into the Pacific Northwest, handful of earthquakes around Mount Hood, it looks like. A couple of very small earthquakes. Same for up around Mount St. Helens. A little bit of activity stirring up out there in terms of earthquake activity. Nothing of volcanic activity for now in terms of interesting activity, that is. Yellowstone National Park, pretty quiet. So let's go double check, see what's going on over here across northwestern Wyoming. Uh, doesn't look like a whole lot. Seismograph stations out here look fairly calm. There's some of the, uh, uh, that's going to be that six pointer off the coast of uh, Japan this morning. Aside from that, uh, there's really not a whole lot of earthquake activity showing up out here for now. Some movement out in Oklahoma, it looks like, near Sparks, Oklahoma, a little 2.2. Aside from that, typical movement out in the oil fields of Texas. One earthquake out here in the New Madrid Seismic Zone, a 2.8. It's right smack dab in that uh, area of concern. Of course, this is the uh, an area that's seen some very large earthquake activity back in the early 1800s, 1811, 1812. Uh, seen a series of earthquakes up in the upper seven range. So things can get uh, pretty bad out there. They've been quiet in terms of recent history, but uh, that's not always going to stay that way. Across the uh, New Jersey area, one little earthquake, a 1.1. An aftershock there from that 4.8 that struck out here uh, a couple weeks ago. All right, there's some of the activity off the, uh, actually it's just 
Um, let's see here. Yeah, it's on land. Uh, 5.5 in the Nicaragua area, the border here with Costa Rica. That, that earthquake coming in this afternoon. And uh, there's definitely been some deeper movement quakes out here, it looks like. That's going to be the uh, this ring well raised off the globe. But notice there's uh, definitely a handful of these deep earthquakes out here. Have to tilt the globe here a little bit to see them, but up and down the middle America Trench, stretching down into this area. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, there's uh, another deep earthquake there underneath Columbia, Columbia, 4.4, 4, 164 kilometers deep. Uh, with this activity stirring up here, definitely got to watch the middle or the um, Caribbean plate over here across the Puerto Rico Trench right now. Uh, mainly smaller quakes out here, but this could kick up with all this movement that's stirring up out here across this area. The general plate movement um, of the Caribbean plate gets squeezed around and pushed around by these major plates here. There's a subduction zone there, the Middle America Trench. And uh, a lot of times when we see earthquake activity here across this plate boundary, things stir up uh, all around the Caribbean plate. So we'll continue to watch that. Um, down across the New Zealand area, nothing showing up here on the USGS map. The latest earthquake shows a 5.4 into the Tonga Trench, about 390 kilometers deep. As far as any new activity goes in New Zealand, still seeing some deeper movement. Looks like we've seen a 4.0 along the southern end here of the Kermadec Trench, also a three-pointer underneath the North Island area. This has been an ongoing deal of deep earthquake movements there underneath the North Island New Zealand region uh, can only think of the uh, strain that's building up here across that plate boundary, the Hikarangi subduction zone. Uh, one little lonesome 3.8 up here across the Kuro Kamachaka. And uh, there's our earthquake activity in Japan from earlier this morning, 6.2, and quite a few other aftershocks in there. Uh, USGS only showing one earthquake, but uh, there's definitely been a handful of uh, aftershocks from that quake. Uh, across the Java Trench, pretty quiet. Deeper activity here around the Philippines southward. Of course, this is very typical. Uh, still lacking earthquake activity here in between the Papua New Guinea area and across this plate boundary. Now, I know we've seen, we've definitely seen some earthquake activity out here in the last week. So um, I'm trying to think which areas may have not seen any sufficient movement. Solomon Islands did see a 5.8. That's fairly decent. Uh, I think this little region right here south of Port Villa may be in line next for some movement. But uh, we'll see what happens here overnight with the uh, ongoing deep earthquake activity and then some movement bouncing back and forth over this area. All right, uh, Hawaii, what's going on out here? Looks like a swarm of quakes stretching out towards the Loihi Seamount. Zooming into the Kilauea Volcano area shows uh, about 22 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours fairly shallow so on that note let's go check out the latest information here on the Kilauea volcano which shows a yellow and advisory still let's see if they put out any updates here so far they've been putting out weekly updates and the last one was put out yesterday and uh, basically they're just talking about the uh, seismicity along with low rates of deformation indicate some magma continues to accumulate beneath the summit and South Caldera region and also beneath the lower Southwest rift zone. Now the lower Southwest rift zone is where all that magma got displaced in the first place there at the end of uh, January. Uh, there are currently no signs of imminent eruption, but of course everything continues to be monitored here. Let's see what we got. See if any of our stations are working out here as far as the deformation data goes. And um, what are we going to do with this? It's offline. How do we know what's going on here? I wonder what's what's up. Today's uh, today's midweek. Should have someone out there ready to work on this. So lacking uh, a couple days here now. It helps to see what's going on with the inflation data, whether we're getting a huge spike or not. And with this, well, we can't tell. Nothing... Uh, to go off of in terms of the data. Uh, seismograph station here. Let's see what we got. Uh, this is the gas monitoring. 
Uh, there's some other earthquake activities. Those are some decent ones right there. Let me see here. Those were, um, were they reported? Well, it's got to be at least some threes or higher. The, huh. See these two quakes right here? Pretty decent signature. There's a lot of earthquake activity that's picking up this morning. Uh, those look a little bit bigger than what the USGS is claiming here. It looks like I'm only seeing um, a 2.4 as the highest earthquake in here. So, yeah, it doesn't look like all that activity is being reported. But uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on it. Obviously, uh, it's an active volcano, and uh, no doubt we'll have an eruption here in the future. All right, um, Iceland, see what's going on here from the Life from Iceland site. I've seen that volcano over around the Indonesia Islands area had a little eruption uh, with some evacuations going on. That's Mount uh, Rung, Rung. Not for sure how you pronounce that, but uh, it is a very active stratovolcano. And uh, there was, uh, looks like 800 people there evacuated the island. Uh, it looks like a four kilometer exclusion zone from the crater. Uh, on April 17th, that's today, uh, it looks like 11,000 residents and evacuees moved to uh, certain other areas there due to the risk of the volcano collapsing into the sea. Now, that could ultimately stir up a tsunami, I bet. Um, the eruption destroyed trees in minutes and caused a tsunami. That, uh, well, this was back in 1871 when that, uh, that was a large eruption. So obviously things could go that route if uh, it continues to um, remain active like that. So we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Uh, I think that's wrong. Wrong. I don't know for sure. I should look that up. Correct me if I am wrong. Not going to take offense. All right. Uh, what else we got out here? I think think um oh yeah iceland let's get back to iceland here see what's going on obviously uh, a little bit of fountaining still going on across the main crater area really haven't seen anything new out here i don't think there's uh looks like morning time out there uh as far as any new earthquake activity any swarms going on any unusual activity things look uh, calm for now about 50 earthquakes in total across all of these rift zones uh, the area around grindavik here really not a whole lot showing up uh, let's check out the inflation data out here the eight hour runtime and uh last time i checked these were working let's see where grindavik is right here and um, looks fairly cur uh, current still seeing that sharp rise here in the last few days get a sharp rise in inflation and then we had that earthquake activity that that decent earthquake swarm there uh, right underneath Grindavik here a couple days ago so still kind of watching that you know the threat for that town is not completely over. Um, see if there's anything new on the Icelandic Met Office. This was put out yesterday, uh, basically stating the same thing. So we're not going to go over that again. Uh, far as space weather activity, I know we're popping here, getting some solar flux index going on up in the red. 217. We are getting active once again. A current sea flare coming in, 6.3 to be exact, from this large active region right here. There's that sea flare. Uh, there's quite a few sunspots that are currently facing the Earth. And uh, this whole region right here is littered with individual magnetic cores, different sunspot numbers. And it does look like it's growing. Uh, getting a little bit more complex here in the magnetic structure. Look at that. It's starting to pop up here like popcorn. And uh, this is when things really start getting active. This thing could pop off some X flares here if this continues to um, accumulate the complexity within these cores. It's a massive region. This area up here is a little disappointing. We're noting a little separation here in that main core, but still harbors some potential uh, for some strong flares. Just uh, 
I'm not liking the looks of that for now, but the main area I think we need to watch here is this one that's uh, almost directly into view. A couple other sunspots around the bend as well across the northeastern limb. Uh, the overall threat right, right now, about 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 65, elevated. And X flare, around 10% chance. And look at that, quite a few numbered sunspots out there. With the most complex sunspot being 36, 39, that's going to be this area up here. But that is the one that's starting to notice some separation uh, of that uh, magnetic core. Aside from that, 36, 45, a beta gamma class going to be this area right about here. And uh, overall, this whole region needs to be watched. Uh, no auroras in the forecast here for now. Hopefully we can get that to change. And to look at the far side of the sun, let's check out the most recent image. Hard to tell. I'm not seeing any super big areas to watch, but uh, it still looks somewhat active. A lot of different dark cores out here indicating some sunspot, potential sunspots. All right, Storm Prediction Center here. The uh, outlook here, it looks like this is for uh, Thursday into Friday, right? Still Wednesday, still Wednesday out here in my neck of the woods. Got a decent area of some severe weather uh, with a risk for tornado activity as well. And the 5% chance here around St. Louis, Missouri, Evansville, Indiana area. Wind and hail threats out there as well. So just a heads up if you're out here in this region. Severe weather potential for your Thursday. A look at the long-term numerical models out here. This is a GFS model. Showing, uh, getting ready to show that storm system that's going to be firing up the severe weather tomorrow. Uh, after that, as we head into the weekend here, multiple rounds of thunderstorms out here across the area of Texas. Uh, going to get some decent rainfall, it looks like. And as we head into next week, more precipitation. I was watching this low pressure here. Going to be pulling up some moisture from the Mexico area, creating some uh, thunderstorms out there. And uh, California is set to get some more rain. Look at that decent shot of, of um, thunderstorms out there midweek. Not for sure what the severe potential is going to be on with that, but uh, I will continue to watch it and report back on anything. It's very active, though. Look at this storm system coming up here uh, first week of May. So we are quite active. I mean, we don't normally get storm systems like this here in May across California. So... <laughs> But we'll take it. It keeps things greener out here longer. All right. Uh, what else is there? I think that's about it, folks. As um, uh, far as volcanoes go out here in the Cascades, the Aleutian Trench, and the rest of the USGS monitored volcanoes, things look about the same as they have been. Really nothing new. The Great Sitkin Volcano here. Been active for some time nothing new on that uh, all volcanoes across the west coast and yellowstone national park remain green we're living in some nice quiet times here with not a whole lot of volcanic activity out here on the, along the west coast but that could always change right these have been active in the past for sure all right um Let's see here. I think that's about it, folks. Um, we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow for a Thursday. Um, seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on across this area for now. Stay safe. Um, I did read something here recently about 911 uh, operators and connections. They're not uh, working properly across several states out here. I don't know what the status is. I haven't called 911. I have no need to here in California, but... Um, if you heard anything about that, let me know. It's kind of kind of interesting here to see numerous states being affected. It almost sounds like some type of uh, some type of cyber attack. Somehow, I mean, it seems to be happening quite a bit here recently. Uh, anyway, we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow morning, Thursday, after a few hours of sleep. Have a good night, folks. Stay safe out there.